All right, Mita, you can start raising your hand uh, for head coach Derek Fisher. For tonight's post-game press conference, you'll hear from coach Neka Gumake, Taya Cooper, and Christine Nigwe. We will start with Jim Alexander with the LA Daily News. Yeah, um, we, when you talked the other day before the Minnesota game, and I asked you what's it going to take to get on a run, and you basically said win the game in front of you and then kind of go from there. And it seems like it's kind of played out that way. Yeah, Jim, I mean, you know, I, it's hard to do. But, uh, you know, I think if we can stay in the moment and, and uh, you know, focus ourselves one possession at a time, one quarter at a time, um, you know, one half, one game, one opponent, you know, we just we give ourselves a better chance. It, it doesn't always work out perfectly, but, uh, you know, I, I think it helps to focus us on what we're trying to do. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's working out for us, but, you know, we still have to keep that, that one game at a time mentality. Uh, we'll go to Kevin Donner with uh, Twitter Sports. Coach, uh, congrats on the win. What, what did you make of the way Christina Nigue played tonight with the with her energy and the bucket she was able to give you there in the second half? Yeah, I mean, Christina, uh, you know, she works really hard to try and keep herself ready for, you know, her opportunities. And they don't always come, you know, when, when you expect it as a player. But she was really ready tonight. And, you know, as we continue to fight our way through this season and we're playing games every other day, there are going to be nights where some of our players, you know, don't have the energy to play the big minutes. And uh, you need players like Christine to come in and, and play with energy, intensity, you know, passion, and, and be really competitive. And, and those things Christine brings to the floor pretty much every time she touches the court. And uh, it was good to see her get some buckets tonight and, and make some really good plays. Abby, h and Media. Uh, hey, Coach, um, you guys limited the turnovers tonight. You only had uh, 12. Um, how pleased were you at the fact that you, you know, kept the turnovers uh, on the lower side and still uh, were able to move the ball around and uh, make the extra pass? Yeah, I mean, I think that's really important for us. Uh, you know, we, we tend to get a little bit risky with the basketball and, and we want to make the home run plays, and it's not necessary for us to do. And so when, when we can eliminate – uh, you know, the unnecessary risk and take care of the basketball and value each possession, uh, you know, it just gives us a better chance to be successful, to shoot the ball efficiently, uh, to get our defense back and set, to get opportunities to get to the free throw line. And those are all important things to, to winning games at this level. Chris Camello. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, hey, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hey, hey, Coach, uh, the depth is really starting to, to show, uh, come into fruition and really show itself. You played this game a long time. Talk about the importance of knowing you could look down at the end of your bench and know that any group that you put out there is going to be uh, really successful or at least be able to make a contribution. So, uh, talk about the depth. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, in every season it's important. Uh, I think in a season like this, it's it's possibly even more important than usual. Um, you know, I, I, I was I'm the beneficiary of you know having coaches and teams that you know believed in all 12, 13 guys, however many guys that were on the team, and um, you know I think it's important to to be able to have that. And you know we we try to play as many players as possible that we feel like put us in the best position to win that night. And every night it doesn't happen that way. Um, but, you know, we, we talk to our players a lot about staying ready for your opportunities um, and, and, and valuing it and treating it right. And, um, you know, I, I think for good teams, uh, you know, it's, it's important to have some depth. You know, we, we, we tend to focus on the star players and the big names, but, but I do believe those complimentary role players, um, you know, they make all the difference in the world. And, if you want them to be ready for the playoffs, the WNBA semifinals, the WNBA finals, they have to play at some point so that you can trust them in those situations. And I'm, I'm glad we're fortunate enough to be able to do it at times. 
Last question for Coach tonight, Sabrina Merchant, SB Nation. Hey, Derek. Uh, you know, this is a team that shoots the three ball exceptionally well. Uh, did you guys make any adjustments, you know, to run them off the line or just how you emphasize closeouts, anything like that? I mean, we're trying to do a better job. I, you know, I think they missed some open looks that they're capable of making. You know, they're playing through a high degree of fatigue um, due to their lack of depth. So, you know, I, I think some of it is that, but, you know, I, I do believe that defensively we're making more of a concerted effort as a team and more people are taking individual pride in what they're doing on that end. Uh, and closeouts is a big part of that. Um, I, I think the play of the game was Candace Parker's rotation out to the corner to block the three-point attempt by Tiana Hawkins. And, you know, that's the kind of effort it's going to take to be the best team in this league at, at the right time. Uh, and there's no shortcuts in, in that effort. And so the more plays we can put together that way where, you know, we're getting it done on the defensive end, uh, you know, I think we have a chance to be, you know, much better night in and night out. And, um, you know, you play against teams like Washington and a lot of teams that are good three-point shooting teams, uh, you, you have to have really good closeouts and really good defensive principles, and we get some good things tonight. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks, everybody. Eli, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. Questions for Neka Gumake, please raise your hand in the chat. We'll start with John W. Davis. Hey, Neka, how you doing? How are you? Doing well, doing well. So I tweeted during the game, and let me know if you feel this way. I tweeted that Neka Agumake has got her groove back. Did you feel like that tonight? I feel like today, you know, I feel a little bit more like myself today. To be honest, I just want to come out and be productive for my team. Um, and as we kind of develop chemistry, I understand that's going to take a little bit of time. Even in a 22-game season, it's still going to take some time. So I'm glad that I was able to contribute on both sides for my team today. Jim Alexander, LA Daily News. Yeah, Neka, um, I want to go back to a, a sequence in the first quarter. I mean, you guys had kind of a field goal drought there for about five minutes, and then you outscored them like 12 nothing in a minute 40 or something like that. Um, is that sort of representative of what this team can do, what it's capable of, and the ability to put down the hammer when you need to? Yeah, you know, I think the drought is representative of us being able to remain focused and even when things aren't necessarily going our way. Um, and for us to be able to convert on those into a 12-0 and run shows the same rigor that we have. I think what's most important is that throughout those runs, we keep getting stops. And so as we develop that cohesion, we want to make sure that we can turn those stops into points. I'll uh, we'll go to Kevin Donner with uh, Twitter Sports. Hey, Neka, congrats on the win. I was just curious, Christine Nigue had a really nice game off the bench, and as, you know, as a post player who's had a lot of success in this league, what's kind of some of the wisdom you've tried to pass down to her as a younger player in the WNBA? You know, I see a lot of myself in Christine. She's very raw and athletic, and she wants to kind of soak everything in. So as a vet, I can, I, I can understand how overwhelming it can be as a young player when you have so many vets on your team. You want to hear what everyone is saying, but I really try to simplify it for her and let her understand that she should trust herself. And when she plays to instinct, that's when she plays her best. So we just try to support her in that way. Chris Camella. Uh, hey, Neka, great game tonight. Um, I, I spoke to Fish, and he talked about the importance of, of depth and knowing that, you know, you could look down the bench and see a lot of players. You, you talked about Christine. Talk about how, if this is one of the more deeper rosters you've been a part of with this, with this Sparks team. It certainly is. You know, I was actually talking to Raquana about this, and, you know, in a lot of ways, if we look at our team from a league standpoint, we could have two starting fives. And um, we have ventures on our team that have started on teams. So for us to be able to have that deep of a bench, but not only have depth, but also that pro productivity coming out, that energy, that understanding that we're all in this together. And quite frankly, you know, the first five, we got to get our stuff together. And then everyone who comes in, they basically bring in that energy. I think we've seen in games before that 
the bench has brought in better energy than the starting five, you know? And so we have to match that. And I think that's a really great advantage that we have. Last question for NECA, Amanda Skurlock, LA Sentinel. Hi, NECA, congrats on the win. Um, I'm curious, you have on a Maxine Waters shirt. I do. Yeah, what, what made you wear the shirt? What do you like about Maxine Waters? I love that she's a black woman that's representing her people. Um, and I have this mask on too, that um, is for the fair fight through Honorable Stacey Abrams. And um, we're here to amplify our voices. So even if I'm not talking about it, I'm gonna be about it. And I just wanna express myself every way that I can to make this world and country a better place. Thank you, Neka. Thanks everyone. Enigwe, we'll start with Sabrina Merchant. Hey, Christine. Uh, congrats on the game today. Uh, you know, on the, the broadcast, they were saying that uh, you kind of developed yourself into like a, someone who people don't exactly like playing against because you go so physical in the game, you know? Um, is that something that you noticed or, you know? Um, probably. I think I like, I really like playing physical. I think I get energy from doing that. And it just helps my team. Um, whatever, like, whatever asset I can be on for this team, I'm going to do it. So if that's going in and playing really physical, then I'm going to do that. Um, and it, I really enjoy it. So, yeah. Uh, we'll go to Kevin with Twitter Sports. Hey, Christine, uh, congrats on the win and the good game for you individually tonight. What What's it like being part of a, such a deep second unit that it's competitive like every single day coach can decide to play someone else and they can go in there and impact the game just the same as I can so every single day you have to be on your toes and really pay attention and especially like our coach coach Fisher he really 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 appreciates people and players that can pay attention to details and that's something that I've had to learn being on this team which is our bench is super talented and the players on the floor are really talented but the little details can really separate the good ones from the great ones uh, Tukni New in LA Times. Hey, Christine, NECA just talked about kind of her advice to you. Um, from your end, what's it like working with NECA? Um, what have you learned from her so far just being in the bubble with her? NECA is like, she's the ultimate professional. She does everything the right way. She um, really has taken me under her wing, her, Candace, everybody really. Um, just always keeping me on my toes again, like always telling me like, the correct thing to do, not because I'm super athletic. She wants me to do it the correct way so I can get stopped, so I can be efficient and effective. And it's been, really been cool learning from her, watching her just grow as a player and a person that's helping me grow into a better professional. John W. Davis. Hi, Christine, quick question. Um, how confident are you in your you know, mid-range to outside jump shot right now? I'm confident. I practice that every single day. I um, even the minutes, uh, even the days I don't play that many minutes, I go back in the gym and I just work with coach. And um, he's really given me that confidence to shoot the ball. So when I'm there, I'm really comfortable. I'm really confident. And I've been working on that. So I'm just like proud of like myself, but also like really appreciate my coaches for believing in me. Uh, last question, Sabrina Merchant. Uh, just to follow up on what you said about how, you know, anyone on the bench can go in and have the game that you did. What do you think it was about, like, this matchup in particular that allowed you to be successful? Um, for me, I just, again, like, I just pride myself on my defense. And any every second that I'm on the floor, I'm trying to get a stop. I'm trying to be active. I'm trying to um, bring energy. So this game really, um, it was a high-energy game, high intensity. So I came in there, and I kind of fit right in. The game got physical, and that's where I kind of thrive at. So when the game got physical, I just adapted to that environment. Thanks, Christine. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, media. Last up tonight is Taya Cooper. We will go over to Tavi with H&B Media. Uh, hey, Tay, um, great game tonight. Uh, with you know, you played nine games now in the um, W. I guess for you, what's been the biggest adjustment um, coming from college to the uh, professional leagues for you? Ball screens. Ball screens for sure. Like just knowing the different reads, like icing, over, under, then being able to shoot behind the screen, pull up, they're going to drive, just dealing with ball screens constantly, continuously in the middle of the court. So. 
LMZ Los Angeles. Uh, Kevin Dana with Twitter Sports. Oh, we got the sleeper, bro. Mm -hmm. okay. Congrats on the win tonight. Washington had nine players, and one of them was someone who just signed earlier today, I believe. So you, know, you, you guys always play with a lot of energy as it is, but when you see the other team being a, a little shorthanded, does that kind of give you extra incentive to say, hey, let's be extra aggressive tonight because maybe we can wear them out a little bit? Uh, we say that if you got 12, 14 people, we we trying to start off strong, energy and effort, um, heavy on the boards, pushing the ball. We trying to do that with every game. So it really don't matter whether you're 12, 11, 10, deep, we staying the same. David Yapowitz, next hoops. Hey, Taya, um, you know, especially in within these last couple of games, you know, you've been a, a key player off the bench, you know, with your, your ball handling, your passing ability, you know, helping run the second unit. You know, just how does it feel knowing that, you know, as a rookie, that coach already has, you know, a lot of trust in you to really help steady that second unit? Well, thank you. Um, I feel like, you know, me and Fish have a great relationship. Um, I can ask him questions. He makes sure I'm aware before it happens. He puts me in situations to where um, I can show my strengths. And um, really just being a point guard, I got to distribute the ball and get my teammates open. And I have great teammates. I have phenomenal players on the court to play with. So they make it easy for me, and I try to make it just as easy for them. John W. Davis. Hey, what's up, Tay? How you feeling? Hello, I'm feeling good. Good. First of all, I want to say the boys in the hood are always hard. Ah. Got gotcha. you. And then second of all, kind of talk to me about playing with these three guard lineups because Coach Fish was telling us that, you know, we're going to see um, some opportunities for three guard lineups when it's Chelsea, you, and Raquana. And then honestly, it's almost like you have a four guard lineup when you have Simone Augustus out there at the four. What is that like playing with like three and four guards at a time? I think it's awesome because um, it's easier to guard on the perimeter when you can switch and talk and rotate any kind of way. I think um, with Simone being the four, it makes it makes it way easier to just be able to switch guard to guard because she can guard anybody. Um, and we easy to push the ball. Push the ball. Simone, can't nobody guard Simone at the four. She can shoot the ball. She's going to bring everybody out. She stretch the floor. So um, Chelsea, Bay on the on the wing, me, point, whatever, whoever's running the point, I think it just makes the game easier. Like, be able to push the ball, run the floor, and shots. Last question tonight, Chris Camello. Uh, Taya, great, great game and uh, great T-shirt, by the way. Uh, classic, obviously. Uh, to, you know, Derek talked about the importance of depth. To be a rookie and to be a uh, solid member coming up off that bench, a consistent rotation player, is this something that, you know, you expected of yourself or when you get up say, wow, I am – I, I'm getting consistent minutes and playing alongside greats like Chelsea Gray and Simone Augustus and Raquana Williams every night. What's your mindset when you're able to be a consistent rotation player? Um, I try not to think about that. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's wonderful. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. But I try not to think about it. I try to just stay in the moment. And whatever he tells me to do and what he wants for that game, I try to execute it. And – it makes my teammates' job easier. It makes my job easier, and it makes the coach's job easier. So whatever I'm supposed to do, I try to go out there and do it, but I really try not to think about that. Thank you so much, Taylor. Congrats.